Hello, everybody, and welcome back to In the Trenches. This is Ian Beckles. Hopefully, everybody had a wonderful weekend. Hopefully, you stayed safe. Um, our Buccaneers went to the West Coast. Did not get it done. Um, listen to all the pundits talk about this game after the game. I hear a lot of people say, well, the Buccaneers kept it close, and uh, they didn't get you know blown out. This is the NFL, everybody. You, you don't get cool points for not getting blown out, right? When I watch this Buccaneer team as a Buccaneer fan and somebody who cares about the way this organization is going to look today, tomorrow, and a couple years from now, I'm, I'm a little bit scared, okay? Because watching the other side of the field and watching John Lynch and uh, making those decisions and Shanahan calling that offense and putting that offense out in the field and, you know, let's, Let's just be real with it right now, okay? The San Francisco 49ers are, I won't even say probably, they're the top two most talented teams in the NFL. I think probably with the Eagles. The Eagles are pretty darn talented. So the 49ers are a very talented team. Look at them offensively. And now let's compare them to the Buccaneers offense, all right? Let's start with, let's just go all the way up to the top. Let's go to the, the front office. Who has a better front office, the 49ers or the Buccaneers? I'll move on. Who has a better coach? I'll move on. Who has a better quarterback? Let's go to wide receivers. Would you rather Ayuk? Let's just say just Ayuk or Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. I'm going Ayuk. I'll put somebody else there and they'll be better. Mike Evans and Chris Godwin are just the guys right now, all right? Tight end, old-ass Kittle is better than young-ass Kate Otten. It's not close. I'm not going to go over the offensive line because it's not necessary. Our one stud, Tristan Wirth, is not 100% right now. Now, he may not be 100% the rest of his life, but he's still pretty darn good. He's going through a time now where he's never given up a sack. He didn't give up a sack all year. He's barely given up a sack his whole, or her whole darn career, right? He gave up on yesterday to Chase Young, and you could tell he's just not, or he's not, not healthy. And they're saying thigh bruise, that's in a high ankle sprain, okay? It's a high ankle sprain. There's no doubt. Just the, the, the way he's sitting on the ground and a high ankle sprain, I know a whole lot about it. You're fine for the game. Once you twist it, you, you lose about 30%. You can make it through the game at about 65%. And then after the game, it stiffens up. And then tomorrow is going to be a mess. But here's the problem. It's going to go on maybe his the rest of his career or at least the end of this season. He's going to keep on spraining them during the game, and he's going to keep on missing time in practice. That's just the way it's going to be. You got to get yourself ready to play on Sunday. So you got to be a little worried about Tristan Wirth and, you know, his his future. I mean, he's going to be fine. But that ankle is a son of a gun, I'm telling you. It's, It's held many, many people back. Defensively? I don't know why people say the Bucks are good defensively anymore. I, I just don't know why. I really, I really don't. Why? What do they do well? What do they do well? I, I mean, they stopped the run okay now. It's not great anymore. We don't rush the passer well. We don't hold people down to a, a few few yards or a few points. Our defensive backs, listen to me. What's that word again? Aren't suck. They suck. Carlton Davis, didn't he used to be good? Jamel Dean's always banged up, but before he got banged up, he wasn't good either. So, I mean, I just don't know what what we expect anymore. And, bro, I tell you, for Buccaneer fans, the optimistic ones anyways, talking about winning five out of the next seven or six out of the next seven, it doesn't work like that. You don't lose five or six and then win six of seven. It, just, it doesn't work like that. Once again, what do you... What are you putting that hat on? What what are you basing it on? Rasheed White? I, I let me say this nicely. I don't understand him. The fact I don't know why you'd give him the ball in the backfield in between the tackles. I, I don't know. I, I maybe I have to go to all twenty two and look at the vi- the the vision that he has. Because from the TV angle, every time Rasheed White gets the ball, he has to pitter-patter his feet. Hit the gosh darn hole. When you pitter-patter, that the hole's closing. The hole does not stay open very long. It's nothing but pitter-patter. None of it's good. 
as bad as he is, you know, running in between the tackles, he's that good running in open space. But you don't get an open space ever. Maybe on a screen once uh, last week, he broke somebody's ankle yesterday too. But just as a raw runner, why are we giving him the ball? You would have been better off re-signing Leonard Fournette. You would have been better off. So here's where we are. We just played a team with a better team, better players, better coaches, better schemes, better front office, better, period. Schematically, boy, Shanahan, and it looks like Madden a little bit. Like, they're doing things. You're like, really? Like that Christian McCaffrey touchdown? I'm not even going to blame Devin White on it. I don't even know if I've ever seen that play. But it's easy to say, well, Devin, you got burnt. Well, in that situation where he's he's literally motioning to the left, cuts back in between the linemen, jets out, and you can't cover that. You have to also go through all the traffic of the defensive side. It was a brilliant call. Brilliant. I'm not going to blame Devin White for that play. Let me get back to Devin White now. Devin White, to me, you just get blocked a lot. Great linebackers don't get blocked. Not, I don't mean never, but when you get blocked, you're also wreaking havoc. Hardy Nickerson is one of the reasons why this defense turned around in the 90s. Hardy Nickerson, if he's going in that B gap, if the ball ain't there, it won't matter. He's going to blow that B gap up. Devin White, a lot of times you're watching touchdowns or runs, and he's just getting washed. He just gets blocked a lot. Great players don't get blocked a lot. They just don't. And Devin White just, I, I don't know. This, I don't even I, I thought Devin White was a, a, a substantial step above Quan Alexander. And maybe he is, but he's just not what we thought he was. Or not what you thought he is, okay? Because he, he had played some games earlier in his career, and you're like, oh, this is the guy. He's the perfect guy. I'm not seeing it anymore. I, and I'm not sure we're using him the right way. Every time I see Devin White blitzing, he's a fantastic blitzer. Every time. Almost you should put his hand on the damn ground or put him in the A-gap every single passing down. Take number nine, Joe Triantranga, off the field. He should never be on the field again anymore. Don't put him on the field no more. Yaya Diaby should be on the field anyways. Don't put JTS on the field no more on a passing situation. Don't do it. Why? Why? I mean, give me a reason why you would do that. Other than he's a first-round pick. He's a good-looking athlete. I don't give a crap no more. But I just don't know where, to, where we're, our energy is coming from anymore. And I'm still hearing it's not Baker's fault. And I don't think it is Baker's fault. But... Am I impressed? No. No. We had seven points at half. We ended the game with 14 points. It's not Baker's fault. I'll tell you what. Our wide receiving core is not helping Baker. There was a couple three drops in that game that were key drops on third down plays. Key, key, key drops. Baker could have easily thrown three more picks. Easy. I don't think he had a, he had a, the fumble. I'm going to get the fumble in a second. He could have eaten. I mean, there was a couple balls that just weren't even hard interceptions. And San Francisco would be kicking themselves today watching that film and not getting those interceptions. Okay? I didn't think Baker played well. I, I didn't. I didn't love the play calling. I don't think our receivers played all that well. And let's go to that Baker fumble. Okay? I hear everybody applauding Baker for being a competitor. He's a competitor. He has a will to win. You don't want your quarterback to have too much of a will to win. And let me say this, all right? The quarterback has to be intelligent. That's first and foremost. He has to be an intelligent person. Intelligent quarterbacks, once they tuck the ball and they're going forward, they know that there has to be a drastic decision made. And you're in the midst of four or five people and you're running with the ball. Where do you think you're going? You're not going to, at most, what do you do, gain three more yards? Great. You still got to punt the ball. I believe this was first and five, I think, at this point. First and five. You have the ball, and he's running. I'm going, get down. He gets hit by Warner on an effort play. What does the effort give you other than possible injuries and a fumble? That is a rookie mistake. That is not the mistake that veteran quarterbacks make. 
It's a bonehead mistake. In first and five, go down. Second and seven, who cares? It's not that bad. We don't ever get third, three yards on first down anyways. You're trying to make things happen. Oh, he's a competitor. Not, I mean, he's hurting the team. You're trying to f force the ball. Baker was forcing that ball to Mike Evans yesterday, yo. I don't know if Mike Evans was giving him the poo-poo face or what it was, but Baker was forcing it to Mike. Mike don't look the same, and sometimes Mike's routes don't look like he even gives a rat's ass, to be honest with you. And Chris Godwin, he's up and down. I think he still think he's probably our most consistent wide receiver, but to be our number one guy, that's scary right now. I, 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 he's a number two guy, clearly. But all of a sudden, we look like a mash unit. Jamel Dean goes down, carried off the field. So when you're carried off the field, you usually don't play the next week. Tristan Wurst is up and down. I mean, he'll be fine for next week, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him on the ground most of the, most games. Levante David is one. I'm not sure I've ever seen him on the field, like laying on the field before. And when you see him on the field, you know it's going to be an issue. And they say groin. And when somebody of the caliber of Levante David comes out the game, you know it's it's serious. So you may miss him for a couple weeks. Carlton Davis missed some time. I don't know if that's a, a loss anymore. I don't know if we're not better with Carlton Davis off the field. So we're in a funny place because I think it was Rondé Barber that said we have the worst defensive backs, backs in the whole NFL. I think it was Rondé Barber said that. But it seems harsh. But in three weeks, we let a rookie quarterback pass for over 400 yards. Then we like a set and second year quarterback get a perfect uh, passer rating in three weeks. So we can't really say that, you know, we have these great defensive backs anymore. You know what I mean? It wasn't all bad. It wasn't all bad. I, I young kid Gadecki, the right tackle, he's growing up a little bit. Like I didn't think he was gonna be it was gonna work for me. I really didn't. It's, I don't know how you play tackle after you couldn't play guard. Like, that's baffling to me. Gadecki, you know, he had a couple, you know, one-on-ones against Bosa and did all right yesterday. I was watching Tristan Wurst lock up Bosa. I mean, locking him up. Forget about if he's healthy or not. Tristan was doing his thing yesterday. It wasn't all, it wasn't all bad. The sack that Tristan Wurst gave up to Chase Young, it was at the end of the game. I just think he was just, his body was just like, I'm ready to get the hell out of here. Been a long, long day, and he was he tried to fight himself through it, but it just it, it ain't it ain't an easy thing to do sometimes. Now, I've been critical of Kate Otten, and I still don't know if he's the guy. Okay, I think Kate Otten would be a great number two tight end, like a great one. I just don't know if he's a number one guy, and the sad part is, he's been our go to guy the last two weeks. Like Kate Otten's our guy. Kate Otten is our guy. Like I don't, I don't know if we're going to win many games with Kate Otten being the guy. I, I just don't. We have too much firepower for a plotting tight end to be your your leading receiver, and for San Francisco to almost eliminate Mike Evans and Chris Godwin for a whole half, you got you got to applaud them for that. You have to. It was thirteen to seven and a half. Some people were complaining that the Buccaneers didn't come out before the half and be aggressive and try to. It's thirteen to seven. You don't think they're happy going into the locker room at thirteen to seven? They're elated. No, what you don't want to do is have Baker put the ball up in the air and interception go the other way, and then the game's over. Thirteen to seven—that's a win if you go into that locker room. But I'm not saying just because the Buccaneers were for you know they were close in this game, that's a moral victory because I, I just. We shouldn't be talking that way, okay? It wasn't a couple of years ago we won the Super Bowl. We shouldn't be talking about moral victories at this point. You know, the, I, I was blessed to sit down and have breakfast with uh, John Lynch and, and Martin Mayhew, both GMs of NFL football team, Martin with the Washington football team, who's going to change their their name. And, you know, we were talking about the ways you, the, you construct a team. Now, Martin Mayhew adopted the Washington team, and they had a bunch of mayhem in the, in the front office, and you had to clear all that stuff up. But when John Lynch went over there to San Francisco, he adopted a, a scenario, and the scenario only got fantastic. You think about this. You know, if you have a quarterback, uh, say, for instance, the uh, Cleveland Browns, 
Okay. The Cleveland Browns have a quarterback that's worth $40 million that's not playing. Look at the difference between having a $40 million quarterback that's not playing, and when he did play, he didn't play that well, by the way. Or you have a quarterback that makes less than a million dollars and is playing as well as anybody else in the NFL. That's what Brock Purdy's doing. He makes less than a Brock Purdy will not play a play a, a down next year. If he gets through this season, he will not play a down next year without a new contract. That's, that's, it's just not going to happen. Not, if he, his agent should be fired if Brock Purdy ever goes on the field next year without a new contract. Okay, Brock Purdy's going to get his money. And that's what kind of scares me about this Buccaneer team as well. We're kind of blessed as well to have a middle of the road. I'm, I'm being nice when I say middle of the road with Baker Mayfield. I'm being nice. Right now he's playing middle of the road. Okay, I'm being nice. We have a middle of the road quarterback right now. He's performing that way. It makes about $4 million. We're blessed as well. Because if we had a 30 or $40 million quarterback, we would have a lot less talent. And God forbid we would have less talent than what we have right now. Seriously. And I know everybody's asking for a coaching change. I hear that in sports radio. You know, Todd Bowles has to go. And if you heard my spiel to begin, you know, this whole rant, do you think that Shanahan would have won the game if Shanahan was coaching the Buccaneers? There's just a lot more talent over there. They're in a better situation. They're, they're more suited to win right now. Because of all the talent they have every darn where, every position, they have a talent that somebody like to go and steal. Every single position. And the Buccaneers don't. So that's not rocket science. And it's not coaching either. We could keep on talking about his Todd Bowles and Todd Bowles is the reason and Todd Bowles didn't succeed anywhere else and blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's a whole chicken salad, chicken, chicken shit thing. You come on now. It's right now, it's a turd. It's a turd. It's a turd that got lucky early in the season to win a couple. Or else, I mean, there was a couple of those wins early that could have bounced the other way. All of our losses, we didn't outplay nobody in any of our losses. Think about that. We, have, we haven't outplayed many teams this year. We haven't. Oh, we should have won in Houston. Are you nuts? Why, how are you supposed to win in Houston? You give up 400 and some yards to a rookie quarterback. Don't say that. You think Monty Kiffin and those guys would ever say that they should have won after giving 400-something yards up to a rookie quarterback? Come on now. And there's no way. No way. I don't think it's time for a coaching change. The Buccaneers is not really their thing. Yeah, coaching change is not really their thing, especially during during the season. So we'll see as we go now. The Buccaneers are 4-6. and six. The Saints are 5-5. Five and five. There's seven games left. You got to figure they got to win five, at least, maybe six. And I'm not doing it to myself going down that schedule and saying they should, they should, they should. They have, they don't should anything. Not, not the way they're playing right now. Because they, they've not beat a team that's better than them yet. Okay, they've, they've probably lost some lesser teams, and I don't even know what that means anymore, lesser. Because when you break down the talent, I just don't think they're a whole lot more talent than everybody else. From what I hear through the grapevine, there's been some talks with uh, Baker Mayfield on an extension. I don't know. Like, Baker Mayfield's got to be in a tough situation as well because he is playing okay right now. What if they say we're going to give you $10 million next year? Are you going to sign it? Because there's not a lot of quarterbacks out there. All it takes is for one coordinator to want you. One. And you make real quarterback money again. Right now he's not making. Right now he's making bad backup quarterback money. Because he wasn't marketable. He came off the street last year. But Baker Mayfield's in a funky situation because if he doesn't re-sign here in Tampa, he doesn't know anybody else is going to want him. Nobody was really knocking on his door last year when when he was out there. And he, anybody could come and, and date him if they wanted. And they weren't exactly knocking down his door, unfortunately for him. The Buccaneers are going to go through this season. And if you look at the, the rest of the schedule, Jack, Jacksonville, okay, Jacksonville's a legitimate football team with a lot of legitimate football players. If they don't beat Jacksonville, they'll go through this season without a legitimate win or a quality win. What's their quality win been? 
Every quality football team the Buccaneers have played so far this year, they've lost. And we give them credit for being, you know, within six points of a team that's better than them. And, and I think that's sad, actually. I, I really do. But there's going to be a lot of things that have to change going forward. I This year is, is you know, I don't want to say this year is a wash, because it's not yet. And I, I'm almost applauding Todd Bowles to have his guys out there still swinging. Because it'll be easy for them to, to, to give up. And in an odd way, I think the Buccaneers think they're good. And that's a good thing. When I hear them speak, it doesn't sound like they're talking out of their ass. It sounds like a bunch of confident guys that believe believe they could have went to San Francisco and win that game. And let me say this as a former uh, a player on quite a few bad football teams. I was listening to uh, uh, Jay Retcher today on, on the radio, and he was saying, you know, players usually think they're going to win. I think that's fact. Like, I, I played for nine years, and I played on some bad football teams. I don't remember ever going to the game thinking we we're going to lose. Like, never. Like, as, an, as a competitor, all you're really doing is competing against the guy across from you. And then you're hoping you whoop his ass and whatever happens, happens after that. But I went, I went to the West Coast and played the 49ers, and I thought we were going to win. I think. I didn't, I mean, that's all I, th- I don't know if I've gone into any game in my life not thinking I was going to win. What the hell are you playing for? But this Buccaneer team still fighting for Todd Bowles. They are. They really are. Canales at the end of this season. You guys crucified Byron Leftwich last year. I got a funny feeling his numbers aren't going to be much better than Byron Leftwich's number. I, I don't know. I haven't looked at them. But I'm pretty sure they're not that much better. I, I don't believe they're scoring as many points. We're not exactly an offensive juggernaut. But you don't cut guys that after their first year. It doesn't make any sense. Why bring them in? Why bring somebody in and let them do something for one year, establish something, and then fire them? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You look at a college, you know, a college football, all these coaches getting fired, uh, Jimbo Fisher and these guys, a lot of them getting fired quick. And, and it tells you how much money some of these organizations have and they're paying them hundreds of million dollars to go away, you know? But we'll see the direction for this Buccaneer team. The Colts are next up. Um, Gardner Minshew, the whole Richardson thing. I'd rather have Richardson in there. I just don't know if the Buccaneers. I think the Buccaneers beat him with Richardson. I didn't see a whole lot of him, but I don't give a crap. He just ain't going to read too many defenses. Gardner Minshew's been around a little bit. Uh, old school cat. You want to know who his clone would, would probably be? Baker Mayfield. About the same player. Gardner Minshew and Baker Mayfield are about the same player. But they, if they have it around them, they'll succeed. If they don't have it around them, they'll look like crap. And that's what the Buccaneers have done here the last few games. Is not done anything around Baker Mayfield. And we just, other than that one game against Houston that was kind of an anomaly offensively, other than that, then the other four or five games squished together, there's just not a lot of offense going on. There's not a lot of consistency. We were 31st going into this, uh, the, the game in rushing. 31st. We're going to be a rushing team this year. We're 31st. That's deep down. That's way, that's way down there. That's way down there. It's, even if you're a high-flying team, it, to be 31st in almost any category is tough. And and this and this Buccaneer team, I'm hoping gives us something to cheer for in the last seven games, because it's about a timing thing. You lose this if you lose this game against the Colts, that locker room is going to be funny. I've been in those locker rooms before. I have. I've been in the locker rooms where at the end of the season, things aren't going well, and then you're three and ten. And everybody's looking around to see whose lockers are disappearing. And people's lockers just start disappearing. Where did so-and-so gone? He's gone. They're going to make some moves. Now everybody's looking over their shoulder and the politics come and play, into play. That kind of stuff happens now. So the Buccaneers, for their own mental health, got to start piecing some uh, wins together 
or the organization is going to come down knocking and bringing people out of that locker room. Because Jason Light, Todd Bowles, the offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, they don't want to believe it's them. But if it's not them, it's got to be the players. So we got to make some. It's got to make some changes. I don't know. I, as a Buccaneer fan, I I just have a funny feeling it's not going in the right direction. And at the beginning of this year, you guys heard me. You've been listening in the trenches for a long time. I didn't really think this team was all that great to begin with. If you listen, you've been, some people been listening in the trenches for um, I don't know, ten years or something like that. I'm right on top of it. Like with Brady, the last few years, I was like, listen, he's still in it. You still, you got Tom Brady still. You still in it. We ain't got Tom Brady no more, yo. We don't have Tom Brady anymore. With Tom Brady, you always got a chance because you had Tom Brady. With Baker Mayfield, having Baker Mayfield as a quarterback doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything because it hasn't equated to anything to this point. I mean nothing. And not not just here, is elsewhere. And he's not the only issue. He's not even close to being the only issue. I'm not even sure he is an issue. But he's going to be the most talked about because he's the quarterback. And if Baker Mayfield's not the quarterback next year, then this year is all for naught. It just doesn't, doesn't make sense. What are we doing? We lose two more games, what are we doing? And if Baker Mayfield's not going to be the quarterback next year, what are we doing? Then you got to start looking at more Yaya Diaby, and, you know, Savassier, all those names like that, that we got to see whether these guys are the guys or not. Some guys you have to figure out whether they're the future or not before the end of this year because you can't really figure that out in training camp. So I'm not pulling the, bl- the plug on the Buccaneers yet. If they lose this game, the plug is pulled, all right? All right. I personally don't think they can win five out of seven games, okay? But you'll see if the Buccaneers win one game, the narrative will change and all the optimists will jump out. You'll see, look at the rest of the car, blah, 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 blah. But the long and short of it is the Bucs haven't done anything this year on consecutive weeks to think that they're going to continuously win. I just, I haven't seen it, unfortunately. And listen, if you've seen it, let me know. You can hit me up on social media. It's uh, I do mostly Instagram. It's Ian underscore Beckles. Uh, make sure you're listening to my other podcasts as well, Mental in- Intimacy with Dr. Gina Love. And I also have Brooks and Beckles that I do uh, with the uh, sports, Vinick Sports Group. So it could be worse, but I don't know how at this point because, boy, we were riding high at 3-1, and one, and now we're sitting here at 4-6 four and four and six and – Looking up at the Saints, there was a time you never thought that would be the case. And it's not like the Saints are balling. Everybody's very doable. Everybody's very catchable. But we just, we have to figure ourselves out first. And that's real talk. But I appreciate you guys and girls tuning in every single week. And let's hope next week that we talk about the Bucks getting back off the snide and winning a football game and us talking about some numbers of ways they can get in this playoffs run because it's looking a little tough right now. Everybody have a wonderful week, and please be safe. Peace out.